with another full face of first impressions. I first got all of these items back in the summer and that's when I started getting this up and then I got some other bits and bobs. But yeah, as you might have guessed, the brand we're doing today is the Sephora Collection range and this is a little bit tricky because I got a few items off their website their US website and also got a few of their items in store in a Portugal Sephora and I think I don't I don't think I know they have different items across all the Sephora so I'm just throwing it out there we don't have a Portuguese Sephora website so I'm gonna link to the French Sephora within the EU which also ships to the UK and Portugal and all that stuff so yeah all the links to the products if I find them are gonna be down below in the description box and let's get started! Today we're using the Sephora Beauty Amplifier Perfecting Glow Primer. You guys know I love a good glow primer. I've actually been applying my primer with a brush, the e.l.f. Uh, Ultimate Blending Brush, and I've been liking it a lot. Ooh, wait! I'm just gonna apply a little bit on my hands because this is, has a weird texture. So this is like... Uh, uh, uh. So it's kind of one of those shade adjusting uh, primers, I think. And it's quite orangey. So I'm kind of scared. Shade adjusting never works unless you're a medium shade, basically. It does have like a glow to it, which is kind of pinky. But then it face adjusts to the or Can you see the orange? Oh my god. Oh my god, why? Maybe it's not gonna be noticeable like under the foundation, but I look like a clown. Look at the shade here. The foundation I am using, they have a stick foundation right now and this foundation. 10 hour wear perfection foundation. It's oil free and actually this shade I ordered from the Sephora US website because in Portugal they did not stock this shade, at least in the Sephora that I went to and, but I think all around they did not stock this shade. This is a 5, the lightest shade that was in Portugal I believe was a 10 but there's also a 7 I think so there's two shades lighter than the lighter one in Portugal if that makes any sense. Outside appearance it does look light enough. But the orange base is still there, so it's freaking me out. I'm gonna go ham a little bit on here. Ah! If this doesn't oxidize, I think I'd be happy with the shade. Although I would skip the primer altogether, really. My neck is slightly lighter, but this shade would not bother me at all. I'm actually surprised with the finish. It looks really great. I'm gonna try to build up a little bit more here, but I also got a pinpoint concealer that I wanted to try, so not too worried about the foundation being completely full coverage. In the back it says medium coverage and buildable, so I think that is what we're heading at. Yeah, we can get definitely to medium coverage, but I don't think we could get to absolutely full coverage. Before we put on the high coverage concealer to pinpoint. This is the kind of the texture and coverage we're looking at. So now we're going into the Sephora Make No Mistake High Coverage Concealer. This is the lightest shade number one. Look, the cell. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna use this on my pimples and then I have a separate concealer for my under eyes because you know I don't usually like to mix things up. We're going a little here, a little here. Oh, I said, oh, at my own skin texture, not at the concealer texture. It takes a little bit of effort, but it does blend out into the foundation, I think. Right now we're gonna go with the under eye concealer, and this is the Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer, and this is the shade 1 Bavarian Cream. Again, it's the lightest shade. And again, I bought it online, so I think in Portugal they did not have my shade. So let's go ahead. Ooh, really light. It is rather neutral. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, I like this. It is kind of like a gel serum in a way that is super hydrating, but at the same time, it does have a lot of coverage, I say. It's kind of like a medium to high coverage, not full, but hydrating, which is usually what I need. Let's go ahead and powder and I'm going to powder with their Beauty Amplifier Soothing Translucent Setting Powder. It's not 
feeling drained right now. Wow, I like that. We'll see how it works throughout the day, but I say this is a good powder for dry skin and dehydrated skin. If you have really, really oily skin, you know, this is a setting powder, so it's not a mattifying powder. So that's something to actually take on. But I like that it's not super ultra drying. We're gonna go ahead with eyes and I'm gonna prime them. And this is the Sephora Tinted and Cooling Eye Primer. I usually like to prime with a matte beigey skin shade, my skin shade. So I chose the shade number two, matte pink beige. I am feeling a bit of a cooling sensation. For my eyeshadow today, I'm gonna to use one of their Sephora Pro palettes, and this is their warm palette. I think this is the biggest palette I own. Honestly, the reason why I never bought into the whole Morphe thing is because when a palette is that big, shades begin to be like repetitive. It kind of depends on how you work with your eyeshadows and how you like to do your looks, but again here, this is a, a little bit repetitive, and then here again, I don't know. I'm gonna start with the shade Oat and I'm doing just like a setting base. And now I would not be a good me if I didn't go into the yellow shade. So I'm definitely gonna dip into Ochre. Do a little transition shade. This shit is pigmented. Let's, let's start here. This may clash with my sweater, so. You know, they are very pigmented and easy to blend and this is a complete matte, so I like that. I'm gonna go into Auburn right now. I know a lot of people do like big palettes. I usually tend to prefer compactor ones because I just, I get confused. This shade does look darker on the eye than it does on the pan. And this is the shade. And I was planning to go that dark, but I was planning on deepening it a little bit afterwards. I am gonna go with the same shade on the lower lash line. And buff it out. And now I'm going back to the ochre yellow and just I'm just gonna go back into the primer and dot a little on the center. Then I'm gonna go into bronze. I love this shadow, but this is not accurately named. This is more like an antique gold type of shade. Beautiful. But it is not bronze. And then just going back into Auburn to define the edges, sort of. And here you can see that Auburn looks really, really way darker. For this entire look, I ended up using four shadows. Some people like to use a lot of rounds just to create more depth and stuff. So it really is down to Reference, but it is a good eyeshadow palette. I really like the consistency of the shadows. So I am going down into sand to do my inner corner highlight and I'm gonna do it with pinky Again, this is more yellow than I expected which is good in this look But in the pan it looks so peachy. It's this one Look how it is. I don't know like I like the formulation but the shades can definitely be misleading so yeah, I'm not gonna touch any more of this for this look, but obviously with this palette, there are endless combinations because there are so many shadows. We are going to mascara. Now this one I bought in Portugal and I don't know if there is in the US website, but you know, you know the drill. If there is, it's down below. This is the V4 Volume Mascara. They have tons of mascaras though. Ugh. I don't think I'm gonna like this. Okay. See? I knew I wouldn't like this mascara because it's one of those where it just tints my lashes. These type of wands do not agree with my lashes usually. I do like the curve. The curve is there, but there is no volume and this is a volume mascara. 
Like my lashes look very wispy and skinny. I like them a little bit fatter. Okay. I still usually get them a little bit fuller, but I like this. This is not bad at all. They don't have a brow gel, which is something in this day and age I find appalling. Okay, you need brow gels. Brow gels are live. They do have two brow products. I don't remember what the other one was. This is a brow thickener. It looks like this. And then when you do this, it's just like a very soft, beautiful cream shadow of sorts. I'm not sure if you go like this. Yeah, okay. I am a little ashier than this. But barely any brand has my shade. I am not sure I'm applying this right. Okay. Eh, this is hard to apply like this. And I just applied way too much. Oh my god, look. I'm gonna try to... My problem with this type of products is that I still want it to hold, so I would still wear a brow gel on top. That's why I like brow gels, because they're like two-in-one for me. But okay, that's not bad. It was rocky there, but that's not bad. We're gonna go in with the highlighter. So I bought this in Portugal, so I don't know again about the US state. And this is their luminizer to go in the shade 11 Miss Sparkling. It's a stick luminizer and it's really cute champagne-y color. I know they have a few highlighting palettes. I didn't want to buy a whole palette just for the purpose of testing it. And I know they have like so this is the blush I have, and they have like contour and blush and bronzer and highlighters, but I didn't like any specific one. So I chose this. But this looks hella cute. I love that it's creamy enough that it's not dragging my foundation underneath. It's just adding on top of it. Really like that. And I really like it. It reminds me of the ASOS highlighter as well. Do it with your fingers. I love this. It's like subtle but potent at the same time. So it doesn't have a lot of glitter, actually anything at all. It's very satiny, but it's so cute and wow. Let's go into the blush. I chose the shade Shame On You. That is pigmented, Jesus. I'm sorry, but I look cute. And I'm gonna go into the last product. This is actually not a first impressions. This is one of my favorite lipsticks of all time. This is one of their cream lip stains and the shade is 33. I have three other shades of the cream lip stains and I definitely do recommend them. They are amazingly creamy, super comfortable, easy to apply and easy to wear. That's pretty much it for today's look. I think it looks bomb. I was not expecting this at all. I think there wasn't one product that I was disappointed by. The mascara is not really my cup of tea, but it actually ended up looking decent. So cannot complain. I did not hate anything. I did achieve a very high coverage with a combination of the products that I had. It is fair enough for me to wear and the powder did not try me out. So I'm liking it, but we'll see how it, it goes throughout the day. So here is the skin as it is right now. The pores don't look overly accentuated. The glow is super cute. In general, I am super pleased with the results. And yay! Eye makeup is still all there and bomb. A little bit of the flakes from the mascara have come down a little. And because this isn't a brow gel, some of the hairs are like astray. The foundation is looking in coverage terms really good. It is a little bit dry and like not flaky, but it has clung to a few dry patches of my skin, but I did start Accutane again, and so that might be why I might be more flaky. That's definitely a possibility. I'm not specifically oily here, so I count that as a win. I also blew my nose a lot, so that might have tempered with that because I'm still a little bit sick. But yeah, I'm not overly oily here or here or even in my forehead. Under eye, there is a little bit of greasing, but it did hold off throughout 
most of the hours, so I really can't complain. And you can only see it if I come up, cl up close because from afar the makeup is still amazing. While my skin might be a little bit patchy, it wasn't a drying foundation or powder or, you know, combination of the whole base at all. I never felt it was itching or drying or really just being weird. I am definitely very impressed about all the makeup from Sephora. I mean, I know they're a cool brand, but I just never got to explore them. It's not that I had a bad opinion on their brand, but it has definitely wowed me more than I thought it would. Most of the products are kind of affordable, more on the drugstore kind of price, except for the big eyeshadow palette that is a little bit expensive. Again, all the links are down below in the description box. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and don't forget to click the little bell button so you know every single time I'm uploading. And also let me know if you want me to do uh, more of these full face of one brand first impressions. Uh, I have a few in the books that I really wanted to get out, but let me know what brands you'd like me to try so I can know like what to aim for, if that makes sense. This was actually probably one of my favorite ones to do. I really like the next one. I think that was my favorite so far until this one. And this was actually really good as well. So, bye!